All right, so it's finally time to talk about Camille. Uh, about a week ago, she, I, I mean, the report came out a week ago that she notified NWA that she would not be returning. And I can get that. She was the champion for however long, three years or whatever, whatever it was. I might be pulling that number out of my ass, but I know she was a champion for a really long time. Um, she had a couple title defenses, uh, Angelina Love, Natalia Markova that I I thought should have beat her. Um, and ultimately it was Kylie or Kenzie Page. I can never get them get them straight. Didn't really agree with it, but what do I know? Uh, so she dropped the title. And at that point, you know, I, I talk about this with Impact a lot of the time, you know, with the long tie of Valkyrie title reign and you know, so some of these, uh, so some of the women in the knockouts division, I say, what is there left for them to do? And Camille is 100% in that ballpark. Now, she debuted in NWA as the insurance policy for Nick Aldis, and they started uh, transitioning to her to the insurance policy for her husband, Tom Latimer. So I said, okay, that's what I guess that's what they're going to do. But it didn't make sense because EC3 is the, the fresher champion, so Tom Latimer is not winning that title anytime soon. Now, if he were going to be the champion, uh, I think there's a lot they could have done together. And, you know, they recently got launched on the CW app, and there's supposed to be more news coming regarding NWA. But, you know, is she one of those talents that were rumored to just be unhappy with the direction of the company, unhappy with Billy Corgan? Maybe she just feels like it's time to take the next step. It's a big loss for the NWA, trust me. And um, I think she lost a little bit of steam with the fans when she started talking. Uh, she was a very strong, silent character at first. And I think she lost a little bit of that <laughs> when she started speaking. But regardless, she was the top dog in that company. And they did something with her that... I felt was done the correct way. It was a way that with impact I've, I've begged for this with, with new people who come in or people they know they want to put the title on. Camille was never in the title scene for, I mean, obviously she was in the title scene, but it, it wasn't off the bat. Uh, she wasn't even flirting with being in the title scene. There were several title changes that took place. She was never in a number one contenders match, nothing. She was doing her own thing separate of that, independent independent of the title, and was built incredibly strong to the point that we wanted to see her challenge for the title. You know, uh, I, I talk, again, I talk a lot about that with Impact. Someone comes in. You know, they win one or two matches. They're now in the title scene because they're the kind of shiny new toy, whatever. And, you know, just to do that, to take a character and just really just build them strong on the outside of it until the point where we're like, yo, we we want to see them finally get that title shot. So that's kind of what they do with Camille. Where could Camille go after this? I don't think I, I don't think AEW is ever a place for female free agents. Obviously, financially, yes. Um, but they are in a place right now where they they're just picking up people from WWE. That that's really all all that's going on over there. Um, I don't see her doing the NXT thing because they just kind of picked up Jade Cargill, and there's some similarities. Uh, you know, with WWE, they don't they're not like, hey, let's get two of these type of wrestlers, right? You know, they try to have. Uh, Everyone stand out and be special on their own. Now, granted, they're completely different in many ways, but there's some overall similarities in how you would handle the character. Um, I can see her doing some MLW dates, you know, but I, I think Impact's a great home for her when they rebrand the TNA. And I've always maintained that the Knockouts division is the one area where they can continue to compete uh, where they can continue to set the standard uh, that they can be better than any other company's women's division. You know, 
they probably will never get that designation. I, I think I think WWE still is going to get that designation at the end of the day because they have the huge stars. But when you're talking about top to bottom, you know, the person with the knockouts championship down to the person who's furthest away from being a champion, Impact's got the most consistent, well-rounded, and best female roster. NWA does have a very good women's roster as well, but a lot of them are still kind of relative unknowns. But I think this is a great place because I don't expect, I've said this many, many times, I don't expect Trinity to return or to stay long-term. I could be totally wrong. But since all these rumors are starting to come out that Mercedes Monet might ultimately just end up back in WWE, Trinity's going to follow her. She's not going to, okay, you know, good for you. They stepped out to make a, you know, to take a stance. And if she goes back, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to stay over here. I just don't see that happening. I think Trinity would go back there in a heartbeat. I don't even know if Trinity wanted to leave in the first place. She probably just followed her friend out. I don't expect her to be there long, long term. And I do expect the Jordan Grace heel turn to happen. So, you know, Camille's someone you can put in that slot. Again, they're probably not going to build her independently, as I just kind of gave the example. Uh, If she showed up, she would be in the title picture almost immediately. But uh, she would would really be uh, the perfect perfect person to bring in because you can't find anyone else like her right now on the indie, indie scene or, uh, you know, a free agent from another company. She would do great in this division. Uh, I, I think it's, um, I just don't know at this point if WWE is realistic. I don't. I think she's she's very, very good, but. Uh, she already has the experience in in front of these smaller crowds, so uh, I think she could blend in seamlessly with the TNA product. And you know, people are asking who's going to show up at Hard to Kill. Who's going to be the, you know, the the big debuts and the big returns? And I don't think there's a lot out there on the male side that's realistic. But the female side, there's always people you can bring in. But this is someone right here that. You know, you can slide her into uh, to a Jordan Grace feud or a couple of these others. And, and there's, you know, you can slide her in to do something with uh, Kylan King. And, and it would be really, really interesting. Uh, and Kylan King did wrestle her in NWA for the championship as well. So I think it's a I think it's a great home for her. We'll see what happens. It's a big loss for the NWA uh, because, again, you it's, it's just one of those people you can't replace. You know, there's not someone on the indie. Okay, let's bring the next Camille in. And it could mean Tom Latimer's uh, on his way as well. You know, he wrestled EC3 for the championship recently. I thought the title match, they came out cosplay like Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. I thought it was kind of silly for a world title match for a big pay-per-view. It was almost to me, just as a fan, as a viewer, that they weren't taking it seriously. So, um I don't know. Maybe he's the follow, but if he is the follow, then TNA is definitely the place. Uh, could she do it at some MLW dates? If it happened, it would be no. You know what? I said she could do MLW dates, but that's pretty impossible because I think her contract runs out at the top of the year. She would literally have to. I don't even know what kind of shows they're running. She would literally have to come in, do one quick show, and then bounce. So I don't think that is a realistic thing, actually. Uh, but I think I think TNA is the the place to be for her.